Hello and welcome to the Practical Animal channel. The channel is for you if you want to know what it takes to work with animals, be they wild or domestic. If wild, that could be with free living animals or wildlife in captivity. If with domestic animals, it could be with agricultural stock or companion animals or working animals. We aim to cover it all. Today's interview also concerns anybody who wants to launch their own wildlife conservation expedition. I talk with Kelly Horner of the Cotswold Falconry Centre. Kelly is a bird of prey display giver and bird of prey breeder and she went to Africa to conserve white-backed vultures. She is here today to tell us all about it. Kelly, welcome back to the Practical Animal Channel. Hi, thank you for having me again. It's a pleasure. Kelly, we'd really like to know uh, more about your expedition with vulture conservation in mind. Where and when did you go to conserve vultures? Uh, so it was back in 2016, October 2016. The centre, Cotswold Falkery Centre, where I work, um, paid for me to head out there with um, the um, Hawk Conservancy Trust uh, and a couple of other centres uh, had some people come along as well. Uh, we headed out to South Africa. Um, we were in Kimberley. Uh, a little uh, nature reserve called Dronfield Nature Reserve uh, in Kimberley, just outside of Kimberley. And um, we were there for four days. And then we went over to Makala National Park and did uh, a few days there as well, catching up and ringing and tagging of um, white bat vulture chicks. Uh, so they were pretty big chicks, not quite ready to fledge the nest, but certainly very close. And there was one or two that when we come up that see in there our presence thought, actually, I'm going to fledge now. They were um, right up in the top of really tall acacia trees. So we had to scale these really thorny ac acacia trees to catch the, the little chick uh, or big chick and, um, and then pop it in a, a little bucket and then wheel the bucket down to the ground uh, where it was then processed. So it had um, blood samples taken from it. Um, it had a ring put on its leg and a tag put on its wing. And then we took some measurements as well, beak measurements and head measurements. Uh, and then it was popped back in the bucket, wheeled back up, that was sort of pulled her back up using um, some ropes uh, and then the person that picked it up was still in the tree. So they were then able to um, take it out the bucket and put it back in the uh, in the nest. Kelly, so for anybody who doesn't know, there is an organisation called IUCN, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. This organisation publishes the red data books uh, and conservation biologists talk about the red list, which means the basic level of endangerment or commonality of, of any animal, really. What's the status of the white back vulture in South Africa, Kelly? Uh, the white bat vultures class is critically endangered in the wild. This means that the next stage would be extinct in the wild. They believe that there's oh, less than 5,000 individuals left in the wild. Um, so they are technically more endangered than things like black rhino. Uh, vultures in Africa, out of the 11 species of African vulture, six of those vulture species uh, are either endangered or critically endangered in the wild. They're, they are really having a, a very tough time in Africa. They are uh, a species that really needs help to be conserved. How is it doing in other countries adjacent to South Africa? The same. Um, there are certain areas where in, um, in the protected areas, parks are the big national parks, they're doing a little bit better. Unfortunately, with a lot of the vultures, they you can't keep them there, they'll, they'll fly and into other areas where they could fall foul to a lot of the problems that and a lot of the threats that they're having out there. They are uh, a species that are doing very, very uh, poorly out there and really do need um, as much help as possible. And Kelly, what was the goal of the expedition? 
Yeah. Um, also, the, the important part was to to be able to identify the chicks. So the leg ring and the tag on the wing was uh, the main ways. And with the tag on the wing, it's quite a large tag that can be visible from quite a distance away. So the idea is that the vultures, when they're old enough, will start moving away from the nest and will start finding food for themselves. They will then go to certain areas. There are areas called vulture restaurants where the vultures will have food thrown out for them and this food is a uh, safe food for them and then there'll be hides around that uh, food where researchers will be sitting keeping an eye on where the birds are and, and who's coming in so the tag is a really easy way to identify the bird so that people know what sex it is how old it is where it's come from how far it's traveled um, information that's pretty invaluable for a species that is in such desperate need of help. It sounds absolutely fascinating, actually. Kelly, how would you describe vulture conservation nowadays? I know a lot more about them because of the um, work that certain organisations have done. Um, the Hawk Conservancy Trust has done a lot of studies and a lot of work um, with the vultures. The people are a lot more aware these days of the problems that vultures are facing. Uh, a lot of organisations, a lot of centres are trying to, um, to raise awareness about the problems that they're facing. So it isn't just, it isn't just the centres that know more, it's, it's the public generally. And a lot of the public will go home and will Google African vulture crisis or the, the uh, Asian vulture problem that's um, also affecting vultures in Asia as well. And people will want to learn a little bit more and maybe help to donate or... This is the Practical Animal Interview.